Welcome back everyone to another video. My name is Fabio. Today, we're gonna go over how I like to make my 3x3 Master Controller Grid Wizard in Toon Boom Harmony. Kind of a mouthful there, but let's get into the video. Before we start, this video is only gonna focus on the Master Controller part, so it's not really a rigging tutorial. This is just for Master Controllers. So here's the file, here's the character that I made, and here are the references that I used. So I used one front-facing reference and one three-quarter facing reference. So I used those references to create the artwork. So inside this character, if you can see, I have everything broken down. So the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the skull. Each of these compartments, that's where I drew my artwork. So I drew the ears in this section, the eyes. I drew all the pieces of the eyes, like the pupil, the eyelids. That goes on these nodes. Nose and the mouth, the pieces of the mouth go here. Like the skull, the beard, the hair, that all goes in this compartment. So once I have the artwork drawn, only the front view. I don't need to draw any of the other views. What we need to do is each piece that you think is going to be moving, that is going to be rotating, it needs what's called an envelope deformer. So. Take a look at the skull. If I hit the skull and I shift D, I show deformers, there's like these green things that wrap around my artwork that I can drag and pull, right? So make sure that each piece that is moving, there is an envelope deformer on it. And the way you add that, you just click on the, the artwork that you wanna add the deformer on. You go up here to this hammer tool, go to tool properties and press this little envelope mode and then you can click around your artwork and then deform it that way. So once everything has an envelope deformer on it, so if I select this whole guy and I press Shift D, look how many deformers I've used, like a lot, right? So all these green things are envelope deformers that I can pull and move the artwork around. So once I do all that, now I can start pulling my artwork to the different views, so I don't have to redraw everything. So what I do is, I'll activate my reference, right, maybe I'll make it uh, like 50% opacity, and then I will pull my lines so they meet the reference lines, right? So I'll basically pull it into place. Once I pull it into place, I'll press a keyframe to lock that position. So all these red dots are different positions that I need. Some people will just flip these uh, profile views, right? But I didn't do that. I went in and separately deformed them because when I tween it in Toon Boom, I don't want there to be any weird flipping going on. So it took me a little bit longer, but I think it's gonna be worth it in the end. And there we go. So I have my poses that I'm gonna feed into my master controller. This is basically how to make a master controller. This is a huge chunk. So take your time and make sure these poses are perfect, like there's no line breaks, each, uh, all the parts are meeting up correctly because these are the poses that you're gonna be using to create your master controller. So to make this master controller, you're gonna need nine poses, so the ones that we just went through. Now, how do we actually make our master controller? Well, first things first, if you don't see these little red things up here, go to window, uh, toolbars, and make sure master controller is activated. Next, we need to go to our node view and select everything that the master controller is gonna be moving. So in our case, it's just the head. The head is the only thing that's moving. So we need to select all the nodes that relate to the head. So if I zoom in everything up to just the head right here, I don't even need the neck. I'm gonna select everything, including the skull and the hair, just like this. Once everything's selected, I'm gonna press my interpolation grid wizard. That's this red thing up there, click it. And now this is what pops up. This is where we're gonna make our master controller. So if we go down here, let's select a three by three grid. So these are just different grids that you can use for different scenarios. I usually like to use the 3x3 because it's very easy and you can get some nice results. Press OK. Now we're ready to start feeding in our little uh, keyframes. So let's start in the middle. So let's start with our 
front facing guy. So select that point there, select the middle point here, see how it says frame 8? So frame 8 is being connected to this E position, press OK, and then you can label it center. Go down, so now our front center, let's go to our B position, feed that pose in, and we'll do center down. Right, and you don't have to press enter or anything, it, it automatically like locks it in. Let's go to our next keyframe, our center up. So let's go center up, click H, press OK. I want frame 10, center up. Now let's go to screen right center. That's this pose right here. Press F, press OK, and so on, right? Are you getting it? So we'll do screen right center. We got screen right down. Let's go to C right below it. Screen right down. Then we got our screen right up. Let's go screen right center. Screen right up is I. Press OK. Screen right up. And let's go to our screen left now. Screen left center. Press OK. Screen left center. So make sure you click the keyframe before you click this grid, uh, this grid wizard. So I clicked center down frame, click A to match it. Screen left down. Let's go up here, screen left up, and we finally have our screen left up. Right, and you know that everything is filled in because their points are green now. They're not red, that means they're connected to a keyframe and it tells you the keyframe that it's connected to with these little numbers. So before we do anything now, let's go down to here, this little section, and press filter attributes, which the value does not change over time. So since we used our deformers, we didn't actually change the artwork, right? So this helps us make the master controller not as like heavy for the program. So see how actually you can't drop from like 500 to 175 and same with the node count it dropped. That just makes it a little lighter to use. Once we do that, let's name it head controller. Let's click create. And now it's going to ask us where do we want this controller to show up in our node view. So it, what I did was I created a separate composite beforehand, but you don't need to do this. You can just attach it to any composite that you want, and that's where the controller will show up. To make it easier for you to see, I just created something called Master Controller Composite. Press OK. Head controller, blah, blah, blah. You just need to save it. Press Save. Last time I did this, it crashed. Hopefully it doesn't now. OK, and once you save it, you can close this window. So now, look at our stage we have our controllers set up. So see how it moves when I drag this little dot, it moves to our poses and it's a very, very smooth transition because nothing's flipping, all the lines are meeting up and we can really get some nice poses like this. So there you go guys, you just made your first master controller. The last thing we can go over is like, how do you use this controller? Let's say you can't see the controller at first. If you go into your node and you click the head controller node, and then you press this little orange button, the controller should appear like this. And if you notice too, it, it appears right in front, right in the middle. And I don't like that. So if we want to move this controller, we can honestly just add a peg like any other thing. Make sure we're on our frame one and then we can move the controller wherever we want and it should stay up in the corner now. So if I hide the controllers with the little gray thing and I show them again, oh, it moves right in the corner now. So it's out of the way, but I can still move, use it to animate. So that's all I have guys for making a three by three master controller. Now the process is pretty straightforward, but you may run into some problems. I know I did when I was first using these. So take your time, don't rush. And if you have any questions, comment below and I'll do my best to 
to get back to you quickly. So that's it guys. So go experiment, have some fun, and hopefully it can really help improve your animation in Toon Boom. Yeah, thanks for watching. Always appreciate the support and I'll see everybody in the next video. Happy animating.